So I started out on this last build, which you can see here behind me, with the goal of it being simple and accessible. And according to Jeanette Lures, simple it ain't. And I can't argue with her. I did end up doing a lot of grinding on that project. So Jeanette, I heard you. And I am gonna make this next build really simple. I'm gonna make it out of a paint can, which I really liked as a material on this last build, and some soup cans. I'm also only gonna use the tools that you suggested, that being 10 snips and a can opener. Although I do need to add a drill to that. Special thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. I'm gonna search for a new paint can this time. I'm gonna pick up a couple of soup cans for my riser pipe, but not the small diameter. I'm gonna go for the larger diameter cans. Let's see. What sounds good? Mm, creamy mushroom. Then I transfer my soup to the pot so I can use the cans. Of course, I'll be cooking it later on the new rocket stove. I'm gonna finish prepping the soup cans by peeling off the labels. Then I'm gonna use the can opener to take the bottom out of the cans. Ooh. All right, this is not a normal soup can. There's no edge on this to grip with the can opener. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can drill these out and then use snips to cut these into tabs. All right, I promised you simple, and this is not heading in that direction. So I'm gonna go get some more soup cans. Ones that I can open with a can opener on both ends. Soup cans, round two. Oh, you've already seen this once before. And now I'm gonna take the bottoms out with the can opener. I'm gonna use the lids to join the cans together with the screws. To do that, I'm gonna bend them a little bit first with some gloves on. Use some self-tapping screws to connect the cans. I'm gonna see if I can avoid pre-drilling the lids, but I may need to, let's see how it goes. Make sure my seam is nice and tight. And now the other side. And make sure my seam is closed up here and even before I put in the last screw. Could probably stop here, but I'm gonna go ahead and secure this with a few more. My seam is not perfect, but I think it'll be okay. Enough to keep the insulation from going inside. All right, now we'll prep the can. I had a suggestion in the last video that I leave the handle on, which I'm going to do. Thanks for the feedback. I'm gonna start by tracing an outline for the soup cans on the lid and the bottom of the paint can. On the bottom of the can, I'm gonna mark out three tabs, about a third of the way around, and I'm gonna leave those in place. The drill bit was wanting to walk around. I'm actually gonna use a cheap box cutter and score the metal first. I chucked this bit way down with just about a quarter inch reveal and that'll help it flex less and be easier to drill. All right, it's a bit snaggle-toothed, but it's gonna work. A couple options here. 
You could use uh, a, a rotary bit in the drill, uh, kind of like a Dremel. If you have a jigsaw, this would be a great uh, jigsaw option as well. Just make sure you're using a metal blade and run it slowly. I'm gonna keep going. Laying that drill bit over allows me to really slice through the metal as well. Now that I've got this open a good bit here, I'm gonna see if I can get the snips in here and see what I can cut with the snips. So I'm cutting this into small little slivers and then folding it over inside except for the tabs which I'm going to fold down. And actually the score line that I did with the box knife is actually acting as an, uh, a nice little score there to bend over. And I keep going with that. See how our can fits. Oh yeah. Perfect. Gonna make sure this is centered. I don't think my line was. The score worked so well on bending the metal over that I'm gonna come back with my cans and use that as an edge here to score the top. Rotate this carefully so my line doesn't shift. I'm gonna connect any little gaps. Draw a little line here in the middle so I can get the snips in. Once these are holes are cut, you can actually connect them with the box knife. Don't do this without gloves. I'm gonna shorten these tabs down a little bit so they're not quite as dangerous. And then bend them over flat. Now let's do a quick test fit to make sure this fits nicely over the can. Yeah, it doesn't have to be snug necessarily, but I'm happy with that. Now I can mount my chimney cans in the bottom of my paint can. I'm gonna bring the riser cans in from underneath. My goal here is for the top of the riser to be even with the top of the paint can. because the bottom section here is actually gonna be down in um, the firebox, uh, which is gonna be brick. So uh, I want that depth here to drop down into the brick layer. So with my cans level to the top, I'm gonna screw in the three tabs. All right, now with my can assembled, let's discuss the insulation material that's gonna go in between the paint can and riser cans. There are lots of options when it comes to insulation. Of course, I used a concrete and perlite mixture in the last build, but this time I'm gonna go with something to dry. And even then, I have options. I've got some scraps of mineral wool, 
There is a recommendation in the comments to use wood ash, which would also work. Perlite, of course, is also an option here. And those are just a few. In fact, I'm gonna use all three. Uh, I'll use the mineral wool to stuff the bottom so that there's not any leakage around the seam. I'm also gonna use the wood ashes that I have. I don't have enough to fill up the rest, but I'll use what I have and then uh, I'll finish it out with some perlite. I've got the paint can supported with some bricks so I can pack in the insulation. I'm gonna process my mineral wool into some smaller pieces so that I can fit them down in the can more easily. I'm gonna be handling the mineral wool with gloves, of course. I've got a nice bottom layer in there, and that's about all that I've got from that small piece. So now I'm gonna come in with the wood ash on top of that. The mineral wool should have plugged all the holes up around the can, so none of the wood ash will leak out. I had a good suggestion in the comments to cover the top of the chimney cans with plastic bag and rubber band to make it easier to get the insulation material in without it falling down the middle. I'm gonna cut a little section of grocery bag and attach it with a rubber band. It's a great solution. Thanks for the tip. If I'd had a little more time, I could have made some more wood ash, but I've only had about a week between this video and the last, so didn't burn that much stuff. I used what I had. Now I'm gonna top this off with some perlite, which I'm handling with my gloves and a dust mask, of course. All right. I'll clean out the groove and then put the lid on. My pot standoffs are gonna simply be some quarter inch nuts and bolts. And these are about three quarters of an inch long, which is the ideal amount of air space between the pot and the top of the chimney. I'm just gonna do three, even though my bag came with five, because three points of contact is always gonna be level. Mark three holes, about one third of the way around, and now I'm gonna drill. Not quite equidistant, but it'll do. Gonna put a couple of turns on these bolts. And then tap it closed. There we go. It's nice having the handle on it, so I can just lift it up and go. Actually makes this somewhat portable. You could potentially take this camping 
if you didn't mind carrying it by hand, or maybe car camping. All right, so it's raining outside, but I'm committed to finishing this video, so let's go build the firebox. But first, I gotta set up some rain protection for the camera. I'm gonna borrow a location here on Rocket Stove Row from my last paint can and Perlite Rocket Stove build. None of the firebox elements are sealed together, so I'm just gonna pull the chimney off and fashion a new firebox. Well, I've had a lot of fun burning this one. Well, I gotta break one of these into some pieces. I'm gonna reassemble the firebox, and this time I'm actually gonna seal it with a little bit of Georgia clay. It'll help hold it together and block all of the air leakage. If you've watched my channel enough, you'll know that Georgia clay is actually the native soil here in Georgia, in the southeastern United States. And it's red because it has a lot of iron oxide in it. This is my base layer here to set the grate in. Georgia clay is also one of my three ingredients that I use to make cob. I'll add sand and straw to that to make my cob mixture. test fit here that's gonna sit in there just like this and I'm just gonna put a ring of the clay underneath here to seal this thing about working with Georgia clay is I never run out. Now one principle of rocket stove design that I'm deviating from a little bit here is that ideally the firebox cross section is the same as your chimney cross section but uh, my cans are much smaller than this area so that will affect the draft a little bit but I think it should work just fine for its intended purpose which is going to be heating up my soup. All right, let's make the connection. And seat this down. Twist it here so the handle's in the back. Well, I don't want the seam in the front. I'm gonna smooth down the clay a little bit. Trains here. A lot of you have commented that you enjoy hearing the train sound, so I leave it in. Someday we'll walk down there and take a look. All right, it's time to fire this up, but I gotta grab my soup out of the fridge and find some dry firewood. That may be a challenge. I found a little bit of dry wood, or relatively dry wood, underneath the sand table here, and I'm gonna use that and a lot of paper to get this thing started. Because I'm warming up soup, I'm not gonna need a huge fire. I don't need it to boil. A rocket stove lighting trick is to light one end of the paper, push it in and let it start the draft, and then light the front of the paper as well. The 
is my 1.8 liter boiler from GSI. I'll put a link to it below if you're curious. I think I might need slightly longer pot standoffs. You want about three quarters of an inch, but I can see that the can is coming up a little bit through the top. I'm losing about a quarter inch of my three quarters, so I think if I switch these to one inch bolts, it should work great. Although it seems to be drafting pretty well, although it's just a little bit smoky. Need to get some more wood on this fire. Warming up. I did have some lumber scraps that were dry. Pine won't burn as hot as the oak will, but it'll burn. I'm actually not gonna paint the can at this point. I wanna see how the finish does uh, just as it is. It would be nice to not to have to add that step of painting. Mm. Now that I know my soup is almost ready, I'm going to let this fire die down. It does pretty good. I'm happy with this. And I hope this fits into the simple category. Special thanks to my new patrons, Dennis Trost, Amin Panasar, and Ross Lee. Thanks for your support. As always, our mission here at Green Church is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. And keep the great comments coming. I'll see you here next week or so on the next video. Time for some soup. Mmm. Cream of mushroom. My favorite.